I cannot believe it guys, I cannot believe we've gone from the mediocrity of Taito Milestones 1 and 2 to this absolutely epic package. Taito Milestones 3 is amazing. Hello Physical Fiends, it's Jordan here with a review of Taito Milestones 3. I don't know what's going on in my life right now, but I'm definitely in the arcade mood. I've recently done the Irem Collection Volume 2, I've been playing Yu Suzuki's Classics on my Dreamcast, and now Taito Milestones 3 has landed in my lap. It's releasing digitally this week, but this is Physical Paradise where I only care about physical releases, and if you do too, Click the subscribe button, it'll be worth it, I promise. And Taito Milestones 3 does have a physical release, and it is much simpler than the previous two releases, but more on that later. What is it all about? Well, it is a compilation of 10 more Taito arcade games. However, unlike the borderline insulting Volume 1 and the barely acceptable Volume 2, Volume 3, I'm sure you've worked out from whatever title or thumbnail I've given this video, but holy hell, all is forgiven. Volume 3 in my humble opinion, is essential. When you've got 8 of the 10 games being downright classics, I feel that this package is a treat. So yeah, I said 8 out of the 10 because one of them is a runt of a game, a game I just cannot grow to love even though I know other people do look fondly upon it, and that is Rastan. When it comes to arcade game genres, I tend to wince when it comes to action platformers. I just don't think it suits the coin-fed nature of the machines, and I grew up being spoiled by home console platformers that had actual balance and enjoyability. Rastan, for all its cool parts, is just a recipe for getting mullered and overwhelmed by enemies. Enemies that can shoot from a distance and at different angles, and you've got a tiny little sword and it is very tiresome to play. I'm sure a lot of you have nostalgia for this, but I do not, and I do not consider it an enjoyable game. Now its sequel is the other game I cannot call a classic, but I admittedly had fun with it. Way more than the original. Rastan Saga 2 is in many ways a step down, visually it's very poor, it controls even more clunkily, it's a game with all the graces of altered beast after an allergic reaction to a beasting, but the fact that there's a bit of balance to it makes it a decent game to play. It's another action platformer but everything is twice the size as before, so it looks like a game made with Duplo rather than Lego. It's one for the kindergarten kids, but it just flows like a better game. If I played this game in isolation, I'd probably request to be isolated even harder, but I may be less forgiving about it. However, playing Rastan 1 just beforehand made me appreciate this one more than perhaps it deserves. I still like to play all the way through though. Now, Rastan 3, also known as Warrior Blade Rastan Saga Episode 3, is just absolute boss. Instead of being an on the rails platformer action game, it now resembles more of a beat em up. Actually, very reminiscent of Golden Axe thanks to the fantasy setting and buff characters and it is absolutely fantastic. It's better than Golden Axe, I love it. It's incredibly satisfying to play, it's got a decent balance to it, there are multiple fun characters to play as, and multiple routes to take. You can choose which levels to take on in which order, and completing each one will grant you some kind of buff, like an increase in speed or defense. There are even story connections. The visuals are incredible, pixel muscles have never looked so good. And there are some fun moments like sliding down a rock face, oh yeah, and there's a babe with a whip. As you may remember, I'm not a massive fan of the beat em up genre, but this is right up there as one of my favorites and one I'd be really happy to pick up and play anytime. Now, Champion Wrestler may also teeter on not quite being an all time classic. I'm still a bit undecided about this one, but I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt because despite not understanding anything about how to play this game, I was still smiling from ear to ear. It's a wacky wrestling game with two buttons, and one of them is jump. And yet you're pulling off all these nonsensical moves, I feel like a bit of a child. I have no idea what's going on, but I'm having fun anyways. I would need to spend more time with this one, and it's admittedly the one game in this package I spent the least time with because a, it's a fighting game of sorts, a genre I don't tend to like, and B, it's a wrestling game, and I don't like wrestling outside of being 9 years old again. Run Ark, man where has this game been all my life? It's another beat em up, but it is so, so wonderful. 
I have seen this game before. It took me a while to realize what I was actually playing. I think I remember Classic Game Room showing this one off a long time ago. In the West, it was called Growl, and it's a beat-em-up that could have been made by Petter if someone on their payroll had at least a double-digit IQ and is a mildly cool person, because it's absolutely off its rocker as you are tired about the mistreatment of animals, so you go on a rampage, exploding all the bad humans who do bad things to animals. For some reason, you're fighting Arab warriors, 1920s American gangsters, and sexy 80s office secretaries who whip out stick hand grenades out of their purple leather jacket. I've never taken drugs, but now I feel the urge to do so. It's just an absolutely magnificent, insane game that represents the absurdity that some of the best arcade games had. No one likes a straight, serious arcade game. Give me stampeding deers and rocket launchers. This game's awesome. Thunder Fox. Okay, this is a slightly more serious run and gun, although it reminds me of like Ninja Warrior because there is a focus on close up melee with a knife, although there are plenty of firearms to pick up. Okay, so this does not hold a candle to Gun Force 2 that I recently played and had a similar theme to this one, but I have enjoyed my time with it so far. In fact, part of me feels like this is a bit of a middle ground between Gun Force 1 and Gun Force 2. It's got the vehicle usage, even similar sort of vehicles as well. I'd definitely be happy to play this again and again. Kadash might be one of the most fascinating arcade games I've ever come across. A game so weird and utterly against the idea of what an arcade game is, I can't believe they even made it. It's weird in the fact that this is a side-scrolling action RPG. Like, no qualms about it, it's an RPG with leveling up with villagers, shops, inns, you can talk to NPCs. It makes no sense to be an arcade cabinet, but I love the fact that they did it. You have a time limit, but it's not particularly harsh at first. And the game has a gentle difficulty curve, making it quite accessible in the early game period. This is a game that probably did not make much money for the arcade owner. In some aspects, it reminds me of Ghouls and Ghosts, the way monsters get dispatched. I like it a lot. I don't know if it's great, but I'm really fascinated by it. Dead Connection is a crazy, insane game. Talk about a hard-boiled detective. This detective causes more mayhem and death even compared to Hollywood movies. It's a bit like a shooting gallery, maybe a bit like Wild Guns, but fully analog, like the enemies come from all around you, and you can also piss around a bit. There's a generous auto-aim to help you defeat the set amount of bad guys needed to pass each stage. You have a cool dodge roll, which feels like it would fit in any modern action game, kinda ahead of its time with this. It's a bunch of fun, but probably even better with friends as you cause absolute chaos and murder gangsters by the literal scores. And finally, we come to the more child-friendly games. We have Bubble Bobble, which I will go on record and say is one of my favorite games from that era. If I had to list my favorite NES games, I'm pretty sure Bubble Bobble would be very high on that list. And as far as I know, the original arcade version is pretty much exactly the same. Putting enemies in bubbles and then stomping on them, perfect two-player single-screen action. It's simple but endlessly replayable and controls really well. You, you all know about this. Rainbow Island is the sequel to Bubble Bubble, and I never played it before. I didn't play it much for this collection either because I've got to be honest, and just I, I just wanted to murder medieval monsters and 1920s gangsters in other games first. But in the short time that I have played it, I am really interested in it. I mean, I don't think it should be a sequel to Bubble Bobble, but it seems like a good game with a rainbow throwing mechanic, which you can then use as a platform for a brief amount of time. Now, the physical release for this is much simpler than the previous Milestones releases. This has just your bog standard retail release in North America and Europe on Nintendo Switch. That's it. There's no special editions, no alternative covers, no collector's editions. It's just a standard retail release. If you click the link down below in the description and pinned comment, you can purchase and support me at the same time. I have linked to VGP, who are a great company with really good prices in cheaper Canadian DOSH and free worldwide shipping on orders over 80 Canadian bucks, about 60 American dollars. And any purchase massively supports me, and I thank you greatly. Would I buy this myself? Hell yes, I would. I think this massively stands out from the previous Taito compilations and even stands out amongst the best retro compilations on the Switch. Sure, I always lament the PS2 days when you had like 50 games on one disc for 20 quid, but those days are long gone. And this is a much redeemed and quality collection of mostly quality arcade games. I would buy this myself, and if you wanted to, check the links down below 
and I hope you all have a fantastic day. Take care.